passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. After they had eaten the supper, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police and the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. So, if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officers, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to, to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it, warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priests questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. 
they themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. They replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are a king? You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After he had said this, Pilate went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and handed him and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. They answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to, them, to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you? and power to crucify you? You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Galbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, 
he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the people read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what scripture says, They divided my clothes among themselves and for my clothes they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, in order to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled none of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. After Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred weight. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden 
in the place where he was crucified. And in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. We have sometimes heard of judges passing judgments in favor of the parties who are in fact in the wrong. And we feel sorry for the injustice done to the innocent. But on the first Good Friday, the judge was not mistaken. He knew what he was doing and he said publicly I do not find this man guilty of any charges against him I will therefore chastise him and then release him chastise him he did by cruel and brutal scourging but release him he did not. He gave in to pressures and condemned the man he called innocent to the death. But where were the people whom Jesus had healed from sicknesses, who were fed with the food? who were forgiven from their sins and people from whom demons, evils were cast out. Where are they? Why is this horrible silence on their part today? No one protests. John and Peter tried. One ran away naked, leaving behind his clothes. The other said he did not know the man. Brothers and sisters, if there was a thing called guilty silence, it was this silence on the first Good Friday. Well, it is easy for me and you to condemn that guilty silence today. Particularly if we consider Christ's passion as an historic event. But it is not so. Christ's passion still goes on and we are present at it. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? As the song says, it causes us to tremble when we hear those dying words of Jesus, it is finished. Something wonderful was accomplished, completed, achieved to the uttermost, engraved forever on the memory of his followers. I have come to seek and to save what was lost. This was his stated purpose, not to be served, but to serve. Jesus' life ended on a rocky hill outside Jerusalem with a final act of self-surrender to the Father on our behalf. The other question is, why did Jesus die? Jesus took upon himself the sentence and punishment due to us for our sinfulness. This may sound cruel, but this is how 
God wanted to work out our redemption. It is either good or bad news. Good or bad story. Just like life itself. It is bad news because Jesus died. And it is good news because Jesus died in our place. Today, the divine word, the self-expression of God, the incarnate word, Jesus Christ is dead. And his voice is extinguished. The New Testament attests that without the Son, no one can see the Father. Nor can anyone come to the Father. There may be a sporadic knowledge of God in the world religions. But without the Son, the Father is personally revealed to nobody. And this is the day when the humanized son dies and the father accordingly becomes inaccessible to us. At the end of the passion, when the word of God is humanly dead, the church herself has few words left to us. She is not to proclaim her faith or criticize society or organize works of charity or do any of the hundred things her members have taken to be man manifestations of the gospel. She has only to intercede and above all to be united to Christ. Dear friends, on this Good Friday, let our grieving for Jesus today not be an empty sentiment. Let it be a grieving that leads to change of heart and mind. Let that be a grief that is ready to make any sacrifice to stand by Christ in his people today who live around us. Let our grief for Jesus heal us and bring us out of complacency to a life filled with his love and compassion. True reverence for the Lord's passion means fixing the eyes of our heart on Jesus crucified and recognizing in him our own humanity, says Pope Saint Leo the Great. We kiss the cross on Good Friday, not for God's sake, but for our own. And in this pandemic situation, we are not allowed to kiss the cross. But we can venerate the cross. We are unable to kiss, but we can venerate. Good Friday. Today is a day of mixed sentiments. Tears for our sins that led Jesus to his death. That led Jesus to his death on the cross. As well as joy for the new life his death gave us. But most especially, gratitude is what God expects from us. This gratitude should make us hate sin. Remember the sacrifice of Jesus at all times and translate our love of God 
into love of all his people.